In Soviet Russia, music listens to you. Hey friends, welcome back to Vinylize. I'm Jarrett New, and today we're going to talk about how during the Soviet Union, music lovers would bootleg forbidden Western music by pressing their own records onto discarded medical x-rays. I know it sounds crazy, but it is 100% true. And I'm going to tell you all about it, but real quick, today's song of the day is Dream On by Aerosmith. Really great song. And if you have a suggestion for a song of the day, post it in the comments down below, and you might see it in a future video. Also, if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about record players, record collecting, and really just music in general, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you won't miss out on the new videos. Alright, now getting back to those x-ray records, here's a little backstory. The year is 1950, and in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, also known as the USSR or simply the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, whose name literally means Man of Steel, ruled the land with an iron fist. In his society, every aspect of life and culture is controlled by the state, including the music you can and can't listen to. Now, being that the Soviet Union and America were involved in a Cold War during this time, Western music specifically was seen as a cultural threat, and so it was banned. But another interesting thing that was happening around the same time was the birth of a whole new genre of music rock and roll. So if you live behind the Iron Curtain, but you want to hear this Elvis guy that everyone keeps talking about, what do you do? Well, you go see Boris down by the train tracks, and you buy some x-ray records. Now, what exactly is an x-ray record? Well, basically, these were normal sheets of x-ray film that had music grooves carved into them. Kind of like this flexi-disc right here. Pretty much the same idea and they had music on one side, they spun at 78 RPM, could hold about three to five minutes of music, and had terrible sound quality. Yet again, kind of like most flexi discs. Now also, since rock and roll and jazz were forbidden in the Soviet Union, some of the more popular artists which got bootlegged onto these x-ray records over the years were Elvis Presley, Bill Haley, Ella Fitzgerald, The Rolling Stones, The Beatles, The Beach Boys, and Chubby Checker. Now you might also be wondering, why did they choose x-rays in the first place? Well, back then in Leningrad, today known as St. Petersburg, the hospitals were recorded required to get rid of their x-rays every so often because they were flammable and they didn't want them to start a fire. So the bootleggers naturally always had a steady supply of them. Also, since the x-rays were thin and flexible, you could easily hide them up your sleeves or in a jacket pocket or something like that. So that made them a lot easier to conceal from the prying eyes of the authorities. So it really was the best format at the time. Now, another interesting fact is that these x-rays also became known known as ribs music, because back then TB was spreading like crazy and the most common type of x-ray was of the chest. So there were a lot of records in circulation that ended up looking like this. Pretty interesting stuff. Now another fun fact is that you can actually go on eBay right now and see many of these x-ray records for sale for about $200 to $250 US. And a lot of them seem to be shipping from Ukraine. So if you have an extra $250, bucks, you can own a piece of history. But just don't expect good sound quality. Probably better to just put it up on your wall and frame it. Now there's also this guy named Stephen Coates, who's a composer and music producer from the UK, who started a really cool website called the X-Ray Audio Project, which is completely dedicated to these very special records. So when you go to the site, you can learn more about their history, and it even has some audio samples of the music itself. So let's take a listen to one of them. Pretty cool stuff. So in a way, if you really think about it, even though they had poor sound quality, these records did serve a purpose. They allowed people to experience a music and a culture that were otherwise forbidden to them. So I think that's pretty cool. 
Now, I'm also gonna drop the link down below to that website if you wanna hear more of these x-ray records for yourself. Now, what do you think about these types of records? Would you ever buy one of these and add it to your collection as sort of a conversation piece? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you love all things vinyl record related but still haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and smash this red subscribe button right here and hit the bell notifications so you won't miss out on the new videos. And most importantly of all, friends, have a fantastic day and keep spinning that vinyl. I wonder if anyone ever bought their own x-ray.